Daddy surrenders. Let me put it this way. I think in Vietnam, the green's a different color. Okay? Come on, let's get back. Show and Stevie how we used to camouflage ourselves in the green berets. That's it's all. invisible, Ma. You're not taking that horrible uniform to carry with well, Darling, don't be silly. It was hanging in the basement when we went to get the fishing rods and he asked. You can't blame him for that. Marry an American, have spoiled brats, believe you me. Oh, really? Marry an Irish last and you get nagged at all the time. Mm. Give me those, sir. Yes, Ma. Where's Mr. Am I on to? You can't be on toe without toe shoes. Now, Melody, put the tutu back in the bag. I said you could take it. Honestly, it's going to be two in the afternoon before we drive out the driveway. You go nag it again. We'll be in carry before dark. Oh, and there are two cases in the kitchen. Look who's carrying them. Martha. Give me those, Martha. No trouble, Mr. Come on, Give this way to the TV. It's too heavy for you, is it? Huh? No, it's not heavy. Martha, take that. Okay, in you go. No, you see us all. No, just like we were invisible. I want to see that invisible. Well, come here. Stevie, Daddy doesn't do that anymore. You see, war is mean and horrible and nasty, and Mommy was probably right. I shouldn't have shown it to you. That thing in Vietnam was stupid and a big mistake. So you forget about it, okay? Okay. Job I like. I've got a lovely family. I've got a lovely home. Two lovely homes. Am I happy? 
you and then he's satisfied here in Ireland. What are you talking about? Well, sometimes I'm afraid you'll miss a competition in America. Miss that jungle? Are you kidding? I'm glad to be out of that executive rat race. Darling, I've fought enough battles in my time. Let somebody else do the fighting from now on. I love you. Do you love me? Mrs. Donegan, you're the nicest person I ever met. You're the dearest face on this earth. And I'm the luckiest man alive. So shut up.
just been left in the cottage, where I found the gentleman's briefcase in the heather. Will I give it to him? No, no not now, not at this time. Uh, I want to get our friend here back to Dublin. Look, put it in the, the boot of his own car and follow him behind us. Mind if I bring Doc Haggerty along with me? What for? He'll want a per diem. Ah, no, no, no. I'll take care of that. That's my next pay envelope. Buck Haggerty is in awe of everybody, Tom. Not just you. I, sir, I know that. But he's also a demolitions expert. Or do you not want me to have any autonomy in this authority that you delegated to me? Wouldn't you know with the cut of his clothes, for heaven's sake? He looks nervous. Does he not? My name's Brewster, James yeah. Brewster. Uh-huh. My grandmother was Irish. Oh, yes. Uh, wasn't everybody. I'm Detective Inspector Maloney. This is Mr. Haggerty, the Dublin police. Uh, I'm Fenway Chemicals, English lawyer. This was our plane, I'm afraid. Of course, you understand, Inspector, we must protect our interests. In terms of possible litigation. Uh, will I carry on my job then, Tom? Yes, you just do that. You know who was on board? Yeah. Robert Leonard, the pilot, Professor Ferenghetti, and Mr. Romano, his assistant, never both Italian. Ah, Professor, that's Yes, chemistry, theoretical research, that sort of thing. We considered him an absolute genius. And of course, he's a great loss not only to the company. Ah, I'm quite sure. There were six bodies. 
Yeah. That poor family. Do you happen to know where Mr. Donegan is just now? Uh, he's gone home to his place in Dublin. That's Russ Michael, somewhere just outside Dublin, isn't it? You left London yesterday. Yes. Ah, no, no, no. You mean three days ago, just after the crash. Because you were in Rome, weren't you? The sticker's on your bag there. Yes, you're quite right. Yes, sir. Professor Fangetti left from Rome. You went to check his hotel. What was he looking for? Just being thorough. Ah, yes. Just being thorough. Timing device. What left of it? Done. No question. Are you sure there's nothing here that I should know about? Well, we're just uh, combing through the wreckage. Uh, where will you be staying? At the Shelvin in Dublin. Do you happen to know? There was a briefcase found here. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I, I found Mr. Donegan's briefcase and uh, was instructed to put it in the boot of his car. No other briefcase? No, sir. That's too bad. The professor was carrying papers. They aren't irreplaceable. They thought they might have survived the crash. Tell me, Inspector, have you ever solved a case like this before? I don't mean to be rude, but have you ever worked on a case like this? I'm very sorry for your trouble, Mr. Donegan. Thank you. I'm Detective Inspector Tom Maloney. What's the police got to do with it? Well, uh, what's this? Look, I'm very sorry. I, I, I really am sorry that it has to be me, and I, uh, that it has to be me this way. Do you know what this is? We've seen a few of them. Well, we established the device was in the wing route. You're telling me this wasn't an act of accident? It wasn't an act of God? No, I'm afraid it was definitely an act of man, Mr. Dunnigan. You see, I know uh, what happened, and I know how it happened. I don't know who, and I don't know why. And whatever the answer to these two questions is, the bomb was planted in Rome. But the answers to the questions are outside out. And that's my territory, Mr. Dunnigan. Well, let me take it off. Hi, darling.
Englishman uh, from London. A lawyer. Who? He says his name is Brewster. If you wouldn't mind, could you spare him a few minutes? Yeah, I'll give him thanks. Fenway wants you to know that it's not unfeeling about this. But something, something could be worked out, something reasonable. Because it could ever, never make up for you your terrible loss. Just something to help out. And whoever was responsible obviously had no connection with Fenway. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Who was, the way you put it, responsible? Well, who knows that? I heard it was a bomb. It was, wasn't it? Well, Fenway would never blow up their own plane. Well, somebody was responsible, weren't they? That's her. Look, I understand a briefcase was found on the scene. A briefcase. Was the briefcase the reason for the bomb? Oh, no, no, no. It was nothing as important as that. It was just something we'd like to get back if we could to save a little time. Look, I haven't the foggiest idea why anybody would want to do this to Fenway. Maybe some demented ex-employee. The oh, world is full of sick people. Could you look in the boot? I mean, your trunk. What? There, there's no point. The only case found was mine. Okay. I'll be at the show, then. I'll be there a few days. I did have a thought. They put together some things for me in a box and carry, and I've got to go through them. And if I, uh, if I find anything, I'll get in touch with you. Uh, where are we staying again? At the show, I'll be there a few days. Yeah. I'll be waiting to see if the police find anything. That's we can have a drink together. Yeah. And uh, perhaps you wouldn't mind signing a little paper, just a little letter of agreement, absolving Fenway or something, just for the record, along those lines. Well, sure, we'll talk about it. I'm a little out of it right now. I feel the same way as you. Now, listen, uh, do you know your way back to Dublin? Yeah, turn right and go back the way I came. No, I've got a better way. Turn left. Then you come to this gas station, uh, petrol station, and then the first light, second light, turn left again, take you straight into town, okay? Thanks, I'll try that.
Tony. How are you? Hey, listen. Off the record. You know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you wanted to know about somebody's insurance policy, and I steered you in the right direction. Well, I want to know the owner of the car. Registration number. O-N-I-613. It's got to be a phony. There couldn't be a license plate like that. Look at the number on the engine block. I, I haven't got the car. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll find another way. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks, Frank. I've been giving a lot of thought to this business of signing that document. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolving Fenway from any litigation to make. Oh, it was very helpful of you. Though, we've now got evidence that there was no fault of our company here. Exactly. Uh, okay, Mr. Brewster, you'll get your signature. Nevertheless, whoever planted that bomb had a motive of either killing the professor or destroying something else that was in that plane. Now, uh, what do you suppose that something else could have been? If I tell you everything that I know, if you sign my indemnification here and now. Well, Professor Ferlinghetti was employed by us as a research chemist, and he was carrying a briefcase containing company papers, technical materials, and I don't know exactly what. On the night, before he left Rome, he lodged in the hotel safe a duplicate briefcase containing apparently duplicate papers. And when I arrived in Rome, obviously armed with a power of attorney, they handed me the briefcase and apparently it had been opened by force. Although the contents were intact, we must presume that they were photographed. Now, when I had them examined by a resident research chemist, they turned out to be useless. So whoever did it didn't get what they came for. That's a supposition, Mr. Donegan. I must admit that I only deal in facts. Yeah, all right. Now that's the why. Who's the who? Ah, Mr. Brewster, at last. I have been searching all over Dublin for you. There's a very informed doorman outside. He says you might be in here. I come from London, actually, to talk to you about Fenway Chemicals. We're in the middle of a meeting, Sir Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I won't be more than a few minutes. It's about that plane that blew up with Professor Ferlinghetti on board. I'm afraid there's absolutely nothing that I could or wish to talk to you about. Well, Mr. Brewster, you know someone had to be behind that crash. It's been in the papers. The plane was bombed. What kind of industrial rivals do you have with motive enough to do that? I haven't the thing to study. Well, tell me, is it true the plane was carrying the swimming ready for me? I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about, as far as I know. There's nothing to it. You could have been terrorist or a plot of some sort. Well, why would terrorists want to blow up a professor of pharmacology? I don't know. Well, is it true that Intent has been making offers recently to the professor? We have many rivals in the world of industrial pharmacology, but I feel I'm not prepared to talk about it to you, so if you'll forgive me, I have nothing more to say. Okay, Mr. Brewster. Okay. I won't trouble you anymore. That woman is such a fool. Who is she? Candy Layton. Part time financial journalist, would be investigative for reporter, which means that she has the answers before she asks the questions. Excuse me, ma'am. Miss Layton! Huh? Excuse me. Uh, my name's Steve Donegan. It was my family who were killed in the plane crash. Oh, Lord. Oh, I'm so sorry. I noticed you staring at me. Huh? Well, I'm sorry about that, too. It's just incredible. The way you resemble my wife. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, anyway, something you said in there interested me. Uh, what's 
Intent. Intent. International Enterprise Corporation. It's a huge conglomerate of enormous power. You've never heard of it? No. Well, why did you mention them in particular? Oh, there's been a rumor in financial circles recently that Professor Ferlinghetti had made some sort of a major breakthrough in the development of a really new revolutionary antibiotic. And Tower of Chemicals, which is owned by Intent, is also working on the same part. And this guy Ferlinghetti cracked the formula first? Well, it's possible. It is possible. Uh-huh. Listen, thank you very much, and excuse me again. Look, if necessary, can I get in touch with you? Well, I'll only be here a few days. I'm staying at Fitzpatrick's in Kalani. Yeah. Okay. I didn't lie to you yesterday, but I re-examined my briefcase, and it's not mine. It could be Benway's. You, you have it? Yeah. Now listen, I, I can't take it to the house right now. I've got a ton of things to do, and I won't be home until around dawn. But if you come around breakfast time, I'll, uh, I'll give it to you. See you around. Uh, Mr. Dunnigan, the bad times we're looking for a taxi. Let me walk you over to Dublin Cash. I'll give you a lift in my car anywhere you want to go. Doesn't mind about the petrol. No, thanks. I'm all right. Uh, Mr. Dunnigan, I believe you were in Kerry for the fishing. Is that right? Yeah. Ah, yes, it's a great sport, fishing. My favorite sport, you might say, fishing. Why don't you say what you want to say? Mr. Brewster was interested in the briefcase. I saw the pair of in the bar together then. Yeah? Or could I see it sometime? It's all burnt up. That's, uh, that's a pity. Why did you ring the central car registration? Huh? So Frank Pearson put me into the cop, huh? <laughs> he did, of course. All right. Brewster left my house. There was a car following him. I'm positive. Good. Good. So I understand. ONI 613. A fraud. I'm having a look for him. Well, maybe, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. You do as you like. Um, uh, you wouldn't want to be doing my job for me by any chance, would you? No. You don't need any help. Because I was thinking, you see, that you might be thinking of revenge. So just, uh, watch yourself now, like a good man. Yes, sir. And keep in touch with me. Yes, sir.
turn off the light? Don't be stupid. The light would draw the neighbors. I, I, I stay downstairs. No, not usually, but I took a pill. Did you? Well, glad to see you. Well, all right, boys. We can leave Mr. Donegan to himself. Right? Morning. What's happened here? Oh, good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm okay, but it seems we have. A mess of burglars. Your firm is constantly engaged, so I found this upstairs, sir. Oh, yes. May I see it, please? Uh, well, yes, we'd better let Mr. Bruce see it. He may be what he's looking for. Something, mate. Must be being in the fire. Then my property and I'm going to open it. It's empty. That was the way it was handed to me after the crash. Are you quite certain that you didn't open it? You just broke the locks yourself. Get your formula. May I have the briefcase? Well, strictly speaking, I should keep it, but if Mr. Dunning doesn't mind. Yeah, sure, yes, take a visit to New York. Thank you. 
But anyway, it's something sensible. I'm sorry. Would you like a drink for your trip? Oh, no, thanks, sir. I want to catch that five o'clock plane to London. Will you excuse me? Excuse me. No, no, more, dear. She dials a number. All you got to do is say who I am. Okay? Thank you. Yes? Well, our policy is not to reveal information about... Yes, well, my superior said it was all right if Mr. Dunnigan positively identified himself. Thank you very much. The car was rented by a Mr. Toombs. Toombs. T-O-O-M-S, Jasper Toombs. And it was charged to a credit card company, wasn't it? You're a trav. It's billed to a corporate account. Intent. International Enterprises Corporation. Does it say where their main office is? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's London. 23 Leicester Square. Got it. Listen, thank you so much. You're very kind. insurance on you and your family? Yeah. I've got here a check in the round figure of... You ready? One hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. One hundred and fifty thousand? Cashier's check, instant good. That employee's policy is for a hundred thousand. What's the extra fifty grand for? The company cares. You know what they said to me? Tell them to go round the world. Well, that just didn't come from nobody. It came right down from the tippy top. What's the tippy top, Connecticut? Higher. Forget it. Higher. It's the biggest insurance company in the world. There's higher. What do you care? You mean we've been swallowed by a bigger fish? Yeah, that's who sanctioned the 50 grand bonus on account of the tragedy. Who is it? Who owns it? You know? Yeah, I know. I'm not supposed to, but I know. Bedroom confidence. My lips are sealed. Well, unseal them. Intent. International Enterprises Corporation. That's who owns us. Ever heard of them? Oh, well, I, I like to keep myself informed. You know, by the way, uh, Mr. Brewster's dead. Oh, yes. Ah. Well, they found him at the foot of the ditch. Spanish national. So they got him. Yeah, they, uh, who are they, by the way? I don't know. Yes. You know, I, I, I sort of envy you, because you, you can get away from here. You know, whenever the fancy takes you, I'm just an old cop. I have to stay inside my own jurisdiction. But just let me give you a tip. As one fisherman to another. When you're going after the big jack like fish, just uh, draw in out of his own deep water. Onto your side of the bank, where you live. Hmm. Hmm. Take care of yourself, won't you? Thank Fine. 
My apologies for not calling ahead of time. Uh, my name's Steve. Steve. Can we sit down and talk? Sure. Uh, yesterday, when we met at the show, uh, I went back into Brewster, and he had me half convinced that you were uh, some kind of a kook. Well, he's dead. Mr. Brewster? Brewster's dead. Oh, good Lord. <sighs> They'll stop at nothing. That's the reason I'm here. Who is they? I mean, what's intent? I mean, intent. Who's behind it? Gray Harrison Hunt. Never heard of him. No, no, few people have. But he does own and control that corporation. And intent owns and controls about 400 subsidiaries scattered throughout 45 countries. Very, very powerful. And I think he's completely ruthless. You sound like you're talking from personal experience. Yes, well, you see, I wrote a book about intent. Ah. I spent about three years on it. I think I must know more about that corporation than just about anybody does. My Lord, I wish I'd read the book. No, it was never published. Well, I tried. It just seemed as if every publisher in the Western world backed off as soon as they considered publishing it. Backed off? Financial pressure? Hmm. In a way. Threats of litigation. I mean, that's expensive. Publishers do have to make money. Listen. Would you happen to have the original manuscript? I do. Could I read it? I'll, I'll, I'll read it right here in the hotel. Yeah, sure. Sure, it's in my room. I'll... Come on up, I'll give it to you. Thank you. Good Lord, are you still reading? Good morning. Mm -hmm. I know you don't believe it. Nobody does. I want to tell you something. I believe it. He owns Eurotrap, the credit card company. He owns your own insurance company. I found out that yesterday. Everything this, everything he touches turns to gold. How does he do it? He steals. Huh? Industrial espionage. And then when he's destroyed something, it folds, and he swallows it up. You want to hear my theory? You see, today, the way you take over the world is through religion or the media. You can own newspapers, TV stations, radio stations, motion picture studios. You can just about control the U.S. government that way. Ain't a bad theory. You're a good-looking lady with a good charm and theory. Sure. Well, now comes my theory. The only way to whip a pyramid is to cut the top off. Then it's got no point. True. But you have to find the top. Hmm. Hey. What? You know what? Why don't you go to see? Where is this fellow? Gray Harrison Hunt. 
Why do you think I'm in Ireland? Hmm? He's got a thing for horses. Race horses? He owns them? Mm-hmm. He owns Rainbow. I know Rainbow. He's a classic horse, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Where is he tonight? Rainbow, tonight, is in a stall in Kildare. And tomorrow, he's going to run in the Irish Steeplechase Derby. He may win it, too. I don't think he'd miss that. Kildare. Roy tends to be very nice.
going to show me some proof. You didn't come here to listen to the story of your life. I'm sorry. Um, you have, I believe, a notion that uh, I employ an angle two. Is that right? Two. Now we're getting somewhere. The credit card was charged to him. Uh, his tomb down there. Would you send him in, please? Oh, and um, tell him to bring in that book of checks, will you? I'm down in your books as a villain. Well, if like you, I'd lost my entire family and had my hard work consistently rejected, I'd be as liable as you to want to kill the supposed culprit. More liable. Ah, tomb. Um, Mr. Donegan, this is by Tombs. He's one of my ablest accountants. It's not him. It's not the same one. It's a different man. Uh, Tombs, would you um, pull out your wallet and show it to Mr. Donegan? Uh, you have in it, do you, your driving license, some other form of identification? Uh, not, of course, your Euro travel card. Um, tell Mr. Donegan, would you, uh, what happened to that? It was stolen from him in Paris a month ago, in a tourist trap. A uh, Paris police report to that effect. There's a date on it. What about Professor Ferlinghetti and the formula? My dear lady, the tower capital is one of my own. He's a fierce competitor. But we are far too successful to resort to blowing up the academic community. You knew about it? Are you saying you didn't want it? The formula. I owned it. Now, uh, Toombs, would you open that book of checks at the first of the page? What does that tell you, Mr. Donovan? It's made out to Ferling Getty for $2 million. And the date? And the dates above and below it. Day after the crash. Exactly. Thank you, Tim. Why wasn't that check given to him beforehand? Uh, having reached New York, it was arranged that a wire photocopy of the check showed him. I think he wanted to give Fedway one last chance to better their offer. Of course, they couldn't. You're saying he was being disloyal to Fenway? Well, I'm afraid so. The trick is, perhaps, he's a good criminal. It's business. Anyway, they were underpaying him. If you want a man's loyalty, you ought to deal generously with it. How are you going to receive the formula? Um, in New York, by an agent. Uh, here, simultaneously, the check was to be given to a designated professor. Nobody trusting nobody. So wait, wait a minute. Hold it. How do we know you didn't drum all this up since we left the racetrack? Including the Paris police report. You must think I'm the wizard of art. Oh, I admit, somebody was responsible for blowing up that plan. But I'm a loser as well. Must be clear to you by now that it was not in my best interest to do so. Uh, you run the American Insurance Company at Dublin Branch. Is the reason for that that you keep pushing the ball uphill? So why would you want to sneer at a man who's made it to the top? That's your own goal, isn't it? Should I be shot? Why did you authorize a $50,000 check for me as a bonus and a broad hint to travel around the world? I must be a soft-hearted idiot, obviously. Not to stop me asking questions. Well, if I wanted to, and if I was benevolent to the race uh, then it would have been possible to have you removed. It's awfully pat. Two plus two equals four is pat. But it's true. Miss Layton, I'm sorry about your manuscript, but it maligns me. Now, I've had to pay out money to lawyers to point that out to publishers. Seven people died when you acquired Sheridan Oil, ten years ago. It can take years, Mrs. Clinch. 
deals. Some people die every time a merger is set up. But I did not invent the accident of death. Have you invested in certain African dictators? Yes, I have. And so have some other Western nations as well. You rank yourself a nation? I'm bigger than some. Better managed than most. Yeah, dear. Let's go. I'm not crazy. You could have arranged all this in such a short time. You could have accepted it. No. Yeah. May I say how sorry I am? Truly. I'll burn what I've written. Well, I never thought I'd hear you say that, Slayton. Well, why don't you both stay and have dinner with me? My dad. He retired down there after the war. With a bunch of his buddies from World War II, you know. They're all ex commandos in a group together. This was after my mom died. Hmm. Sounds a bit eccentric. No, not, not, not really. How many meetings? Thornton, Donegan. And they're all there together, you know, sharing their moments against the Nazis. And... I kind of gesture to see him. It was really hit hard. I'd like to meet him. Yeah. Look, have a good trip to London, and I'll call you when I get back. Oh, Lordy. What am I going to work on next? It's been so long on this. Yeah. Well? Maybe there's a story in Corsica. I don't want you to come with me. I'm going. I'm going to Corsica. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm going. I've decided. No, I can change my mind and dislike you, you know. Look, I am going to Corsica because I feel like it. That's all. I just feel like it. Women's lib. All right. Buy your own ticket and carry your own bag. All right, I will. Give me the bag. Like Cynthia's son. He sure does. No, 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 no. Not interested. No. Too soon. You're surrounded by your old crew of relics, aren't you? <laughs> You'd be amazed. I'd still take any one of them into battle with you. You still think you can go 15 rounds, don't you? When did you become arrogant? <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, they're worried. My memory is the best. Good, I'm the stranger. But they, they tolerate me. What upsets them lately is that new perfume factory they're building now. You smell? In several ways. It's bringing a lot of strangers in. The world's impinging on them. That hotel down the road, building an annex. They're all getting too civilized. It changed. They, well, they can't enjoy it. And you? I hate it to I. It was just a nice little stretch of beach to get washed up on, a shaft of sun to sit in the evening of my life, listening to the Mediterranean sculpting, looking at faces. Faces? I remember very clearly, looking scared to death and brave both at once. Yeah. Soon that thing's going to start. Chimneys spewing fumes. There'll be dead birds, fish washing up, sick to death. People start waking up, coughing their lungs out. Oh, those... Those old fellows, <laughs> they're mad as wet hens over it. Where'd your lady go? My lady? I don't know. Here she comes. Right now. Hi. Catch it, Bradley. He's just in this perfume factory. Yes, yeah, yeah, we were telling me about it. Discussing. It's owned by intent. Owned by intent. What don't they own? Who cares? Steve, listen, there's a man at the hotel. He's just arrived. And I think he works for Hunt. He's in charge of security. And uh, there's a man with him. His name is Toomes. What? 
There he is. your house looking for the briefcase. But you don't have that thing, do you? Oh, Lord, Steve. You do. Maybe you'd like to come with me to a little protest meeting tonight about the perfume factory. The local capo will be there. Eh bien. Dis, Louis, que si il nous aide, vous y à la fabrique ce soir, moi, je tiens des paroles dans cette autre affaire qu'il fait de moi. The capo says he'll accept your offer of technical assistance during the matter of this night. As the other thing, he'll abide by your deal. It is a deal. I help him. I certainly help you. But he's got to keep his word on the other thing. <laughs> if they give him the hand, they always keep the word. We can do that. Capo? This security fellow, Tombs, he'll check up after and find you've been here. I'm counting on that. You tell Hunt. Hunt know you were Green Beret. You'll figure it. I hope so. You know something, Dad? This is going to be like my calling card. This Harrison Hunt fella. You'll know I'm onto him. That he murdered our family. I'm going to get him. Edwin, I know you know the number. Just be 
make of the phone call. You're out of your mind. Tell him! If he's interested, I've got the briefcase with the papers he wants inside it. You're cracking up, you know that. Tell him! I want two million American dollars in cash in the suitcase. I never heard of anyone called Gray Harrison Hunt. I, I swear to you. Tell him! I want to see him in person. Or the deal's off. At 8 o'clock tomorrow, in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Son, just keep your hands away from that briefcase.
very foolish, Mr. Donegan. I'm naive. Forgive me, I'm in something of a hurry. Yes, and I'm in the Irish police force. Oh. Well, what's it about? Well, if you wouldn't mind stepping into the office, thank you very long. Are yours, Mr. Hunt? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, and the contents, your own personal possessions. Yes, of course. Well, I, I wonder if it'd be some time, Mr. Hunt. this morning, declared every penny of it. You can check with currency control. Yes, I've done that already. And the, uh, the other case, Mr. Hunt? Uh, company papers, I Ah, yes, well, it should be good enough to... Thank you. There's been a terrible lot coming in from Corsica lately. Corsica? Hmm. Oh, I see. 
You do realize, don't you, Inspector, that this is a setup? Well, I understood you to say, Mr. Hunt, that all the contents of these cases are your own personal property. However, I, I'm sure you can make a satisfactory statement for the central police station. So if you come along with me now, Mr. Hunt. <laughs> Look, Inspector. Mm-hmm. I'm a very busy man. A very rich man. I don't need to do this sort of thing. And I don't need this sort of publicity. Now, why can't we just sort this out, man to man? Now, why don't you take this attache case and the heroin? I'll just take the company papers and leave. We'll say nothing more about it. Hmm. And that's your second serious offense today, Mr. Holmes. Yes, sir. Last night, just as soon as he had a bag packed. Now, he told me to forward his letters to, um, here now, Mount Brandon Hotel, Tralee. I hope he won't mind my giving it to you. Don't you worry about it. He'll never approach you for it. Change your name, go back to America! 
I'll say that we, we buried you! What do you say? Mr. Dunnigan. Ah, uh, Mr. Toons. It is Mr. Toons, isn't it? He's going to kill me. Oh, is that so now? No, he's going to kill me. Um, are you going to kill this gentleman, Mr. Dunnigan? Oh, well, but then you... He shall leave me here! Oh. <laughs> take, take me in charge. I insist you take uh, me in charge. You see, Mr. Toons, under the laws of this country, I can only take a man in charge if I reasonably believe that he's guilty of a serious offence, or may be a material witness in the commission of a serious offence. Wait. Hmm? Wait. You, you can't leave me here with him. I'll, I'll give you the evidence. You will. <sighs> right, so. <clears throat> now, just... Uh, there we are. I am Jasper Toombs, aged 43 years, is that right? Yes. Resident of Switzerland. On the morning of April the 18th in the city of Rome, in company with another man whom I identify as Fritz Grossman, right? Mm -hmm. I installed in the wing route of an executive aircraft a combustible device with intent thereby to cause loss of life. I did this on the express orders given to me personally the previous day of one Gray Harrison Hunt. Would you please uh, sign this for me? There you go. Thank you. Right, Your big jack pike fish for you? Luke's that is another thing. Never back into the water, sir. I wish you know that yourself. Well, I get rid of that thing if I were you. Another day already. Man, my love. 